All right, so this talk will be just a little bit different. Um, we're looking at the consumer side of the problem, and I'm Nate Scusa. This is the talk is an in-store assessment of consumers' willingness to pay for organic apples. And what we're looking at is how do people make decisions in the store? So just a little bit of background. Um, organic apples are one of the top three fresh foods purchased by consumers of organic. And Organic is what we call a credence attribute in economics. It means that it's something that the only way that you know if it's there is if someone tells you. And it relies on certification and labeling. There are other, attribu other attributes that come along with it, possibly things like taste, uh, what we call experience attributes, or there may be uh, appearance type attributes. But what people are mostly concerned with are the things that are related to that credence attribute. They're concerned, is it organic or not? Does it come with all the potential health benefits, the like absence of pesticides, all those sort of things, or not? And so the, um, the implementation of the National Organic Program and the labeling standards that came along with them unified, to some extent, how things were standardized, how uh, they were certified, and it gave people a sense of, we know it's organic, we know exactly what it means. But, in general, typical consumers generally don't understand the particulars of organic. They don't know what it means. And consumers' preferences for various attributes, including organic, can be assessed, measured, by using what we call willingness to pay. And we can assess how much they put, uh, how much value they put on certain attributes by looking at how much their willingness to pay differs between products. So the objective of this study was to estimate what we call externally valid measures of the premiums that the typical consumer is willing to pay for organic in apples and in larger size in apples. And by the typical consumer, I mean that these aren't, we didn't go to natural food stores, we didn't go to places where we already know that people are, have actively chosen uh, to consume organic. These are just typical consumers that we found in ordinary grocery stores. And we wanted to estimate, is there a relationship between uh, size and how much people are willing to pay for organic? And so we conducted what we call a field study. And it means that we went to multiple grocery stores in Spokane, Washington in March of 2010. And we conducted what we call experimental auctions. And I won't bore you with the details of an auction. But what an auction allows us to do is it gives us a theoretically true value that people place on a good or a service. Right? So we went into these stores and we got people's true values, supposedly, for apples. And the way that we do an auction is we exchange real apples. People really buy a good. We really sell a good. And participants are entirely in charge of the purchase decision. They have the ability to say, no, I don't want this, or yes, I want it, and determine exactly how much they value it. In addition to um, measures of their willingness to pay, we also collected information on their demographics, purchase habits, what they usually like to buy, um, and other aspects. For our experiment, previous research has showed us that consumers can only make decisions between a limited number of items at a time. And so we limited it, at least in an experimental setting, and so we limited our choices to four types of apples. They were all Washington Extra, extra Fancy Fuji apples, which is our, uh, our state's highest grade of apples. And every consumer was faced with four versions. There was two sizes, count size 113 and count size 180, and there were two types of production, conventional and organic. And the organic were labeled as uh, USDA certified organic. Every other attribute of the apples were held as constant as possible. We chose the best appearance we could. We tried to keep everything um, in the setting completely constant between the different apple varieties. And individ individuals bid on uh, one pound or approximately a half kilogram of apples. And they bid on each of these different types of products individually. And so we can interpret the differences between the willingness to pay for these different products as premiums for those particular attributes. So for example, um, if someone bid $1 for 
for size 80 conventionally produced apples and they bid $1.50 for size 80 organically produced, we could interpret the 50 cent difference between those as a 50 cent premium for organic. All right. <laughs> Doesn't have to mean anything to you. <laughs> so what we find in our data is the data, the willingness to pay data is what we call sensor. It means that people can't bid less than zero. And so, but some people don't want to buy a good and so they will bid zero, not less than zero. And so we have to explain why did they bid zero? Why did they bid positive? And we hypothesized that there would be, uh, that there was a two stage decision process in whether people decided first, do I want to bid on apples at all? Am I willing to buy them at all? And in the second stage, how much do I want to pay? And so what we broke it down into yes or no, will I purchase these or not, and how much do I pay for them given that I will purchase them. Um, the variables that we included, we introduced variables for size and explan other explanatory variables like demographics and shopping habits by themselves to explain people's overall willingness to pay, and then we allowed all those things to interact with the organic characteristic. And so what we can look at is, um, we can look at the direct effect of a certain demographic on how much people value the product, but then we can look at the additional effect for that organic product and see if there's a difference. So we can actually identify, do different groups of demographics, um, do different habits, lead people to have different premiums. So in this model, premiums can vary by demographic. Right, and so these are the actual frequencies of bids. We, um, the experiment that we conducted, we collected 242 observations, meaning that we interviewed 250, sorry, 242 unique participants and collected their willingness to pay values. And what you can see is um, uh, the high two lines in this section, the purple and the green, are willingness to pay values for the conventional products, size 80 and size 130. And what you can see is the conventional product kind of peaks in this 50 cent to one dollar range. Most of the data, almost 50 percent of observations for both size 80 and 130 fall in that range. Then the other two colors, the blue and the red, they kind of peak in the same place but they're much more spread out. So the people tended to have higher willingness to pay as we'd expect for organic products. The other thing to notice is I left a category for people that weren't willing to pay anything. Meaning they said my value for any product, uh, any Apple product, organic or whatever, on this particular day in the store is zero. And what you can see is, um, for the green and the purple, which is the conventional, about 5% of our participants said, we have no value for this. And that could be uh, because maybe they purchased apples recently before, maybe they just didn't buy apples on a regular basis, anything like that. Right? So it could be infrequent purchases or just it's a product they don't buy. Then you can see for the organic types that for the small, uh, relatively small organic apples, there's about 12% of people that said zero and about 13% that said zero for large, meaning that uh, despite the products looking almost identical, almost twice as many people said, absolutely no, I won't purchase this. All right. I'm going to leave out the, uh, the estimations that we have in our model. But what we found was participants in our study were less willing to purchase organic apples than conventionally produced apples, meaning that if the product was organic, it was identical to the rest, people were more likely to submit a zero value for it. Second, we found um, organic apples for people that did want to purchase it or that would be willing to purchase them received about a um, 35 cent per pound premium or a 70 70 cent per pound sorry per kilogram premium for the apples roughly 30 to 35 percent extra they were willing to pay for the organic apples the large apples so the size 80 as compared to size 130 received about 19 cents per pound premium and about 41 per kilogram premium 
The fourth point we found was apples received the same premium for size regardless of whether they're organic or conventional. So there was no interaction. We didn't find that people prefer larger apples if uh, they're organic or smaller apples if they're organic. The premiums could just be added. And the fifth, what we found was for our sample, consumer demographics didn't impact the premiums associated with organic or apple size, meaning that at least for our sample, premiums didn't vary with our demographics. So there's kind of some discussion points are the fact that we saw about twice as many people bidding zero suggests typical consumers are still a little bit skeptical of organic. In this study, we didn't provide them with any um, objective information about what organic meant. So they were operating off their own knowledge prior to coming in the store. And the second thing is they were typical consumers. They were in typical or ordinary grocery stores. They weren't selected on the basis of having previously consumed organic. And so this is kind of representative. Typical consumers, a little bit hesitant to spend money on organic. But the other finding is that most consumers are willing to pay pretty significant premiums. And uh, of course, size receives a premium. Questions? How did you select Spokane as your target audience? Uh, mostly for financial reasons. Um, scope of funding. It was not the most demographically representative uh, population we could have picked. So that could be one explanation for why we um, premiums didn't vary so much with demographics. But it was, uh, this was initially intended to be more of a pilot study to go somewhere more uh, demographically representative like Seattle and ran short of funds. Yeah. Yes? So what time of the year did you do this study? This was in March of 2010. So it's, um, part, part of the reason why we chose the, the Fuji's was that was, those are ones that were still in reasonable, decent quality during that time. People were also fairly familiar with it. It's also a uh, pretty good tasting apple. But yeah, certainly time of year could affect it as well. Um, this was an in-store study. And so one of the things that's happened when you go to a store is people have already made the decision to be in that store. And so a lot of the, um, the things that would normally determine uh, how much you value something have already been determined just by showing up in that place. Uh, yes? So yes. just, oh sorry. So just to add, add to that, were they washing and grown apples? Yes. And they had yes. washing from local? Yes. And they knew that it was washing from Yes, them. absolutely. Yeah. Was this a suburban supermarket or inner city supermarket? Um, we actually had mixed. Two of them would be considered uh, suburban, and the other two would probably be considered uh, in the city. Yeah. Yes. Could you discuss the variability? I mean, you gave the, the overall price premium for size and mm -hmm. organic, but looking at the lines, at some, at some points there was actually a size uh, uh, de or a, a premium decrease based on size. Smaller sized apples, they get more and bigger. What what kind of I mean, Obviously, the average of the data gives you those, those big numbers, but how much variability was there within? Uh, well, let's see. So per pound, for size, for example, the variability looks to be uh, about a cent per pound as a standard deviation. So. Uh, as far as size goes, at least in this, this is controlling for everything else. This is in the model itself. Uh, in the model, a typical consumer would fall within two cents of that. But I guess in looking at where, the, you know, if you go back to the graph. If you go to the fourth of the bottom, though, uh, it's actually. Is this? Yeah. So when I look at that, I see size 113, uh, I've got to get my, uh, or size 113. Uh, organic yes. is, has a higher premium at times than size of the organic. Yes. But at other times it's lower depending on the price. Yes. 
So how do you account? I mean, I guess that to me, you know, the lower prices are more willing to buy smaller apples, the higher prices are more willing to buy bigger apples. I'm trying to wrestle with that very early. Okay. Um, so to, to an extent, what we found is, yes, there are, there's going to be premiums and discounts for individuals over that entire range. And uh, even though, I mean, visually you can see it, it wasn't statistically significant over most of the range. One of the things we didn't control for, and that may be something we need to do, is see how people fall into, um, in these certain ranges, whether behavior changes in those different ranges. And that may be, uh, presumably some of that was controlled with our other uh, covariates, but yes. Yeah. 